study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Hello, saints. Peace, grace, and love in Christ Jesus be with all of you. I hope everyone is doing well out there. And I'll tell you one thing, you do not know what cold is until it's been minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit for seven days in a row. Then you'll understand what cold weather really means. And that's what I've been experiencing here up in the Northeast. Now, for those of us who understand right division, who have a grasp on who we are in Christ Jesus, also know and understand how important Paul's 13 books of Romans through Philemon truly are in the time period that we're in today known as the dispensation of grace. However, does that mean that the rest of the Bible is useless for us? Absolutely not. The entire Bible is written for our learning as we shall see in this study. In fact, today we're going to be looking at uh, we're going to look at the four Gospels within the four Gospels, specifically the book of Luke. And more specifically, we're going to be looking at the dispensation of law slash kingdom, the prophetic program for and to the nation of Israel, the Jews who are going to inherit the earthly kingdom one day very soon. Now, did you know that there's a thief in the kingdom? There sure is. And that's the title and subject of today's study. And in this study, we're going to be looking at three main points. The first one is why did God find it important to record what the two thieves had to say on the cross? The second thing is why is this important for us to understand today? And third, what should we do once we understand this information? Well, first, let's take a look at the story of the two thieves in God's Word, uh, Luke chapter 23, in verse 24. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. Okay, now the crowd, the Jews, wanted to put Jesus to death, specifically by crucifixion. And Pilate was giving them an option. He could have released another prisoner instead uh, or he could have kept the other prisoner and released Jesus. He could have released someone. So the crowd is chanting we want Jesus to be kept as prisoner. In fact we want Jesus to be crucified. Go ahead and release the other prisoner. In verse 25, and he released unto them him that for sedition and murder. You see Pilate reduced, redu uh, I'm sorry, Pilate gave them the other prisoner and released him instead of Jesus and he kept Jesus as prisoner which would be crucified whom they had desired but he delivered Jesus to their will in verse 26 and as they led him away they laid hold upon one Simon a Cyrenian coming out of the country and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. So they pick this man Simon a Cyrenian and they tell him to help Jesus carry the cross and that's what he does. Verse 27 and there followed him a great company of people and of women which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning unto them said daughters of Jerusalem he's speaking to the Jews the nation of Israel weep not for me but weep for yourselves and for your children there's a reason why he says this we're gonna see this in a little bit for behold the days are coming in the which they shall say blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck then shall they begin to say to the mountains fall on us and to the hills cover us for if they do these things in a green tree what shall be done in the dry and there were also two other malefactors then uh, led with him to be put to death 
And when they were come to the place where they were to be crucified, which is called Calvary, there they, they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Now, that's important to understand. Here we see one is on his right hand, the other is on his left hand. Where else do we see that in scripture? We see that at the second coming when Jesus separates the sheep from the goat, one on his left hand, he will say, depart from me, I never knew you. And those on the right, he will say, you've done well and go into the earthly kingdom as their reward. Okay, verse 34, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, them here being the nation of Israel, for they, the nation of Israel, know not what they do. They didn't understand that they were crucifying their Messiah that had been prophesied over and over and over again by the old prophets. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. And saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him, over his head, in the letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on him, okay, was giving him a hard time, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Right? He's giving him a hard time. He's mocking Jesus. But the other one, and how much you want to bet this other one was on Jesus' right hand, okay? The right hand being the sheep going into the earthly kingdom. And the other thief most likely would have been on his left hand representing the goats who will be discharged out of the world and into perdition and suffering and death. Okay, now back to 40. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? Verse 41, And we indeed justly for yeah, we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man had done nothing amiss. And he said unto the Lord unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, to the thief on his right hand, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth, the sixth hour being noon, twelve o'clock noon, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour at three o'clock in the afternoon. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. Remember, it was torn in half from top to bottom. Okay, it was a supernatural act. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up his ghost. Now, when the centurion saw the, the, the centurion was one of the Roman guards, and when he had seen all these supernatural actions and acts going on and happening, it, for lack of a better term, it freaked him out. And he saw with power and awe, and he was shocked straight, okay? The centurion saw what was done. He glorified God, saying, certainly this was a righteous man. He could see that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. It was someone who was more than man and the centurion Roman soldier saw this and he saw all the darkness around him he saw things that were happening that couldn't be explained that he had never seen before and in his opinion he could see that there was something special about this person all right so the verse the first thing we need to notice here is what Jesus has to say about Daniel's 70th week okay now, you didn't know Daniel's 70th week or Revelation is seen here, did you? But, yes, it sure is. Take a look at verse 27 again. And there followed him a great company of people, 
and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming. Now he's speaking about Daniel's 70th week here, Jacob's trouble, in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. Okay, these are women that have no children. They're most likely single, most likely virgins, uh, maybe not. But anyway, they're without a family and they're able to flee Jerusalem quickly without having to tow their children and their clothing and their food and all these things. They'll be considered fortunate. They'll be considered lucky because they're able to flee in a hurry from the Antichrist. In verse 30, then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? Now here we see Jesus warning them of a future event where the nation of Israel is going to suffer for rejecting him as their Messiah. And we know today through the finished work of scripture that this period is called Daniel's 70th week or even Jacob's trouble or even as some call it the seven year tribulation period. It's all one seven year period and the last half of that period, the last three and a half years, is known as Jacob's trouble. It's the worst of the seven years. The first three and a half years are going to be pretty bad as well. It's not going to be peaceful or easy to get through by any means, but the latter half is really where all the trouble comes from. And in the very next verse, we're introduced to two thieves one placed on either side of our Lord Jesus, like I said, left and right, both representing the, uh, one's representing the sheep, the other one is representing the goat at the second coming, suffering the same style of death, the death penalty invented by the Romans, okay, which we know today as the crucifixion. It's interesting to note that when our Lord's death was prophesied, it also said he'd be prophesied by crucifixion. And when the prophecy was made, uh, there was no such thing as crucifixion. Crucifixion was invented somewhere in the future by the Romans because it was a particularly uh, painful death. It was a torturous death. It took a long time for the people to die on the cross. They suffered violently before death came to rescue them. All right. So crucifixion was invented by the Romans, but the prophecy that Jesus would be crucified was made a long time before it even existed. So that proves that prophecy is indeed supernatural and it is true, 100% true. Now, let's take a look at the situation a bit closer in verse 32. And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. Now, here are the thieves. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, and a malefactress, one on his right hand, the other one on the left, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, mocked him coming to him and offering him vinegar and saying if thou be the king of the jews save thyself and a superscription also is written over his head in in greek and latin and hebrew uh, and it said this is the king of the jews and one of the thieves the malefactors were hanging there it was were he was railing on jesus mocking him saying if thou be christ save thyself and us but the other one on the right hand wasn't mocking Jesus. He answering rebuked him, saying, Dost now thou dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man, Jesus, hath done nothing amiss, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in 
paradise. So the question here is, how did this thief get saved? There's no water baptism. There's no confessing of sins. Certainly, the thief knew nothing about Jesus being raised the third day. No one knew uh, or understood that Jesus was going to be raised again in the flesh on the third day. And look at Luke 18 and verse 31. Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and spitefully, and treated, and spitted upon. And Jesus is talking about his crucifixion here. Verse 33, And they shall scourge him, and put him to death. And the third day he shall rise again. Now look at what it says in verse 34. And they understood none of these things. And this saying was hid from them. Neither knew they the things which were spoken. The disciples couldn't understand. It didn't matter how much Jesus explained uh, you know, explained it to them and told them exactly what was going to happen, that he was going to be crucified, he would be buried, and on the third day he would rise again. He kept telling them, but they were blinded supernaturally. They could not understand what he was talking about. They didn't know if he was talking about a parable or if this was going to happen. They just couldn't understand it. So it was kept from them. Okay, So the thief on the cross, the good one, okay, the one on his right, uh, the one that was taking for him, couldn't have known about the crucifixion, the burial, and the resurrection. Because none of the disciples even knew. All right, So the point is, the thief certainly knew nothing about Jesus raising back to life again on the third day. The thief knew nothing about any of the prophecies concerning him or who he was. So why was the thief allowed entry into the kingdom? If the thief didn't confess his belief in the resurrection or never confessed his sins or never got baptized and so on or never repented as they say or never knew the apostle paul or never read first corinthians 15 1 through 4 then how did the thief get into the kingdom without any of these things remember earlier when i said there's a reason why god records certain things for us if god found it important enough to tell us what the two thieves were saying on the most important day in history, then there's a reason and we need to pay attention, close attention. The only way, the only way to understand why the thief was allowed into paradise on that day is by understanding the difference between the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of grace. Or another way to say it, the dispensation of the kingdom or the dispensation of grace. I ask you a question, which of the seven dispensations was our Lord Jesus crucified on? It can't be in today's dispensation of grace, it can't be in Paul's gospel, because Paul didn't even exist yet. And keep in mind, this was before the Holy Spirit had come down from heaven. This was before Jesus rose from the dead. You see, our Lord Jesus was crucified in the dispensation of law. The crucifixion itself was the fulfillment of the prophetic laws spoken about in the Old Testament by the prophets. You see, it helps to have a good foundation in right division and dispensations when it comes to answering these types of questions in the Bible. What, what did they have to do in that dispensation to be saved? Well, let's take a look in Matthew 3, verse one, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he. Who's he here? This is the Messiah that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John the Baptist had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. 
then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins. Now look back at verse 2 and saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand for this is he John the Baptist that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness. You see John was also in prophecy. John was the person that was prophesied that would come to prepare the way for our Lord Jesus Christ or their Messiah who would usher in the kingdom, right? So we're looking at the dispensation of grace slash dispensation of the kingdom if they would have allowed it to come, right? So the gospel during that dispensation was repent and believe that Jesus was their prophesied Messiah coming to usher in the earthly kingdom that was prophesied to the nation of Israel all throughout the Old Testament scriptures. So back then, the believers were going around saying, look, stop sinning, repent, turn from idols. The kingdom of heaven is upon us and the Messiah is walking the earth right now. So get ready and straighten up your lives. You know, change, stop doing all those sins. It is very much the same thing that we hear today being preached by people using loudspeakers in the streets and on the corners of streets. Uh, you know, these people have no clue that they're preaching the wrong gospel. They're preaching the gospel of the kingdom and they're completely ignorant of the gospel of grace that we're in today. Anyway, back to the thief on the cross. The thief was saved exactly how they were all saved back then, okay? Let's take a look at, at, at what the, the believing thief said on the cross one more time. Verse 39, And one of the malefactors, the th one of the thieves, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other one, answering, rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God? seeing thou art in the same condemnation you see there's the the repentance right there the thief turning from the world turning to jesus christ or jesus the mashiach the messiah in belief right verse 41 and we indeed justly for we receive the due reward of our deeds but this man hath done nothing amiss you see he he admits something here we see the thief again repenting admitting he's a sinner or or we can say he's confessing his sins right there and he said unto Jesus Lord he calls him Lord remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom and there's the last piece of the puzzle for salvation under the kingdom program believing that Jesus is the Messiah ushering in the earthly kingdom that thief believed that right and finally we see the result of this repenting confessing and believing that jesus is the messiah jesus says to him and jesus said unto him verily i say unto thee today shalt thou be with me in paradise so under the kingdom program the thief on the cross did everything needed to be saved first he repents second he confesses and third, he believes. And that, my friends, is why the thief was allowed entry into paradise. Notice, there's nothing there about death, burial, and resurrection. That's because it wasn't part of that dispensation, the dispensation of law or kingdom. It helps to understand all of this if you have a good foundation of right division. And if you don't understand right division yet, please take a look at a video that I have on my channel. The title is called Daniel Prophecy slash Rapture Mystery slash Right Division. Okay? So what we see through understanding the salvation of the thief is the exact method needed for the nation of Israel to be saved. Right? Did you get that? What we see the, the thief do on the cross, the exact method he uses to get saved and to get into the into the uh, paradise was exactly the same thing that the nation of Israel had to do to be saved back then but they didn't right 
under that dispensation or administration. In fact, that same method to get saved was extended for another year all the way up to the prophet Stephen. You see, they had a chance. They had a chance to repent as a nation and believe that Jesus was the Messiah as a nation, but they didn't uh, heed Stephen's call and they stoned the prophet Stephen, right? So when they kill Stephen and they reject Christ Jesus, then God presses pause on that dispensation and begins something new with the Apostle Paul. We know this as the gospel of grace, the mystery gospel, the secret gospel that God hid within himself for such a time as this. And how do we know that the establishment of the body of Christ was kept secret till after Paul's conversion? Well, we know this by several ways. In one way, obviously, the only way is the Word of God. Okay? In the King James Version Bible, Paul tells us over and over again, look here at Romans 16, 25, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to what? my gospel, Paul's gospel, that was revealed to him by Jesus Christ, okay, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, right? A mystery is something that was never known before, which was kept secret since the world began. This secret mystery gospel of grace was revealed to Paul. It wasn't revealed to Peter. It wasn't revealed to the other disciples. It wasn't revealed to any other prophet. It wasn't revealed to Stephen. It wasn't revealed to anyone. The first person the gospel of grace was revealed to was the apostle Paul. That is so important to understand. And that is where the gospel today comes from. We are the body of Christ, made up of Jews and Gentiles, one body of many members. And it first started with Paul's conversion in Acts chapter 9. All right? In 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7 and 8. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery again. Here's that mystery. Something never known before. Even the hidden wisdom. It was wisdom that had never been revealed before Paul. Right? And who showed Paul all this wisdom and this mystery and this new gospel called grace? Who revealed it to Paul? It wasn't Peter. It wasn't the other disciples. It wasn't any prophets. It wasn't scripture. It wasn't any uh, the Egyptians or the Chinese or, or the Taiwanese. It was our Lord Jesus Christ himself that reveals this mystery, this new gospel called grace to the Apostle Paul. In verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would have they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Not even the angels knew what God was about to do. Not even the, the princes and powers, uh, the principalities and so forth, they didn't even know what God had up his sleeve and what he was about to do with his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross, being buried for three days and raising it up again back to the flesh on the third day. And this would be, it would become the mystery gospel that God kept hidden within himself. And he would reveal what that was all about to Paul. Okay? Because even after the resurrection, the disciples and Peter and so forth still didn't understand what happened. They didn't, they didn't comprehend what just took place. They didn't know anything about the gospel of grace. They knew nothing about the body of Christ. All they knew was what the Lord, our Lord Jesus taught them while he was on earth with them. And our Lord Jesus taught them all about the gospel of the kingdom, not the gospel of grace. Our Lord Jesus explained to Peter and the others that he was the Messiah and the kingdom was about to come. You see, the earthly kingdom, the kingdom on heaven or the kingdom of heaven that was prophesied all throughout the Old Testament was now here. It was being fulfilled. 
and Jesus was fulfilling these things. He was fulfilling the laws. He was ushering them in the, the kingdom that was prophesied to them. But they understood all that. They understood all the prophecies. But this new thing, this gospel of grace that was revealed to the Apostle Paul, the mystery, Peter and the others had no knowledge of this until the Lord ascended to heaven, until Paul understood it, and then Paul came from Damascus later on and he comes and he talks to them and explains to them what the Lord revealed to him, the gospel of grace, the mystery, the body of Christ, us, that's us today, right? Ephesians 3, 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Again, we see not made known. It was a secret unto who? The sons of men. Was Peter and the, and the other disciples, were they sons of men? Absolutely. They were Jews. And so even our Lord Jesus Christ was called the son of man as well right so none of them knew about this new this body of christ none of them knew about the gospel of grace none of them knew about this mystery it's so important for people to understand that in galatians 1 11 to 12 but i certify you brethren that the gospel which was preached of me this is paul speaking the gospel that i was preaching is not after man in other words no one taught it to paul then he goes on to say, For I neither received it of them. Again, nobody told Paul. Neither was I taught it. Paul didn't learn it out of some book somewhere. But by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave Paul visions and revelations so that Paul would understand what this gospel of grace was all about. Paul would understand what the mystery gospel is why it was kept secret when it why it came out with paul why the others didn't understand it like paul did paul was given all these all the big explanation as to what god was doing because the nation of israel rejected their only messiah you see and within the mystery of the gospel of grace or the dispensation of grace were other mysteries you see there's like sub mysteries under the major mystery such as the judgment seat of Christ. That's one. The building of a body of both Jews and Gentiles together. That's another mystery that was never revealed before. Right? Making Jews and Gentiles one group or one body of members. Another mystery that we're all familiar with was the mystery of the harpazo, the catching away, the rapture. Right? So let's look at the rapture for an example. Using that as an example, in 1 Corinthians 15, Verse 50, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. Paul is showing them something here that they've never understood or seen before. This is the first time they hear about this mystery, and it is the rapture. Understand, these people knew all about the resurrection, because resurrection was part of the prophetic program for the nation of Israel. In the Old Testament, throughout the synagogues, throughout all the prophets, the resurrection of the saints was a very, very, very common teaching. So they, the, the resurrection has nothing to do with the mystery because they knew about it. So it's not a mystery. So what's this mystery that Paul's telling them here? It can't be the resurrection. It's got to be something else, right? Well, we know it is something else, and it's called the rapture, the harpazo. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Okay? Pay careful attention to verse 51. Paul says, I show you a mystery, something that was never known before, something that had never been prophesied by the prophets, this is something different and something new outside of the prophetic program for the nation of Israel. And we know the prophets prophesied again hundreds of times concerning the resurrection of the saints at the, at the second coming. So obviously the resurrection wasn't the mystery to them, right? 
What Paul mentions here is something different, something other than the resurrection of the saints. Paul speaks about the body of Christ here and the rapture, both mysteries, not the Old Testament saints or Israel, all right? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, verse 13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Okay, so we see that our program for today was kept secret until the nation of Israel completely rejected Jesus as their Messiah. Then we see Paul's conversion in Acts chapter 9. Then we see the mystery revealed to Paul by who who reveals it to Paul? Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, right? In this dispensation, in our dispensation today, we're saved by believing who Jesus is and what he did for us on the cross, the finished work of the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection. He took our all our sins and nailed it to the cross with himself. He took our sins and brought it with him into death. Okay, He destroys our sins with him in death. And when he raises from the grave on the third day, he raises up in full glory and righteousness. And that righteousness covers us today. Those of us that believe and trust in him and the gospel, that righteousness covers us. So when God the Father, our Lord God, looks at us, he doesn't see our past sins, our future sins, or today's sins, he sees us covered in the light of pure glory and righteousness of his son. All right? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Paul speaking here, and he's about to declare to them what the gospel is, what you need to know to be saved, okay? And notice how different this is compared to the gospel that John the Baptist was preaching. Okay? Notice how different it is. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received. Right? He told them the gospel before, and he's reminding them what he told them. Verse 2, by which also ye are saved. They were, the, Paul saying, look, the gospel I gave you guys a long time ago is the same one I'm about to tell you, and you've been saved by that gospel, okay? Wake up. Remember what I said to you guys. If you keep in memory, okay? He's telling you, remember what I said, what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. And what he's saying there, unless you said you believed, but you really didn't, okay? Uh, you know, people do that today. They, they, they believe for the wrong reasons, or they say they believe for the wrong reasons. For an example, some people uh, may say they believe in God just to get a handout, just to get money from people, or the, to get money from the church, and so on. They may lie about their belief in Christ Jesus. That would be believing in vain, okay? For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. So he's telling them, first of all, Jesus is the Christ, and he died for your sins. He took your sins into the grave with him, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So there's the whole gospel. Christ Jesus is, is our Lord. He is the Son of God. He is uh, technically God in the flesh, okay? And he was, he was crucified. He died, was buried, and rose again on the third day. All right? In full righteousness. Now, did the thief on the cross know anything about Paul's gospel? Absolutely not. Paul wasn't even converted yet. 
And that's because the gospel for them back then was different. Okay? And it was it's not for today. You see, they were under the gospel of the kingdom or the Mosaic laws, right? They were still uh, living by the, the Moses' laws, the commandments, and that was their downfall. They loved the laws. They loved the laws more than they loved Jesus, right? So they were trying to save themselves by following the laws, by doing good works, by good deeds, and so on. And it's obvious, if you read scripture, Paul talks about it a lot. You cannot be saved by the law. You will be condemned over and over and over again by the law. That's why God put laws on the earth. To show you that no matter what you do, you will fall short. And those laws point out how sinful you are. Right? They point out that you need a Savior. You see? The, the laws that God gave and handed to Moses to hand down to the nation of Israel was basically setting them up to realize that it ain't going to work. They're going to need a Savior, which would be Jesus the Messiah when he came later on, right? So it's important to understand that they were all under the law back then, and Jesus had come to usher in the kingdom. That was the, the prophetic program, the prophecy of the kingdom. But they rejected Jesus as their Messiah, okay? And uh, But because the thief repented and confessed his sins, and believed that Jesus was the Messiah, he was saved and allowed entry into paradise that very day. Today, however, that gospel of repent, confess, and believe will not save you. There are many people out there today that believe Jesus Christ was the Messiah, but they deny that he died and rose again. And they're not saved. They're being deceived and misled into a religion of salvation by works, right? Placing them back under the law, the yoke of bondage, once again, and ultimately leading them straight to hellfire and torment. Our gospel for today is found in Paul's 13 books, Romans through Philemon. All right? Read the books of Romans through Philemon if you want to know what you are supposed to do in this time and age and in the gospel of grace in the body of Christ what you what God wants you to do specifically what he wants you to be doing right now today you will find the answer to that in between Romans and Philemon there's 13 books in a row and it's all about the mysteries given to Paul and then he wrote them down for us okay so if you want to learn about us the body of Christ read Paul's books don't go to Matthew Mark Luke and John or Hebrews or the book of James or in Revelation to learn about the body of Christ because we're not there I'm sorry to tell you this but we're not in those books those books are talking about the kingdom gospel those books were talking about John the Baptist and repenting and confessing and believing in the coming kingdom to get saved you see those books weren't about us we weren't even in the gospel of grace and the body of Christ hadn't been revealed yet it was still a mystery okay that's important to understand so the nation of Israel's kingdom gospel is found in all those books outside of Paul's books right again you can find him Matthew Mark Luke and John Hebrews through Revelation is all about the nation of Israel and their coming kingdom it's not about the body of Christ Jesus today again I can't stress that enough you first have to understand the seven dispensations at least dispensation number six and seven which is grace and kingdom us and the future before you're ever going to understand the bible who we are in christ jesus and our future in the heavenly program right you need to first understand the basics before you're going to understand the mysteries you can't do it in reverse because you're going to get all confused again 
None of this is going to make any sense to you if you're not rightly dividing God's word. So please watch the video on right division that I mentioned earlier. And I'm going to leave a link for you in the description box below. All right. So we've looked at our objective. We had three objectives to take a look at. Today, the first one was why did God record what the two thieves had to say? Because it was important for us, obviously. Second thing, why is this important for us? Well, it shows us the difference in dispensations, the gospels, salvation methods. Uh, it's a perfect example of why right division is so, so, so very important. And third, what we should do with this information. Okay, so now that you know, teach someone else or point them to the scriptures and share it with them and teach it to them or perhaps share this video with them okay in conclusion we're given a glimpse of the different dispensations by the actions of a believing thief on the cross who jesus promises that he would be in paradise with him on that very day by simply believing the gospel of the kingdom repent confess and believe right so we can see how important everything is in god's word it's all there for a a a very uh, big reason and we're to study to show ourselves approved unto god at all times right saints so thanks for studying with me saints peace love and grace in christ jesus be with all of you and i'll see you on the next study lord willing
Thank you.